What's up, Scout? Well, looks like we didn't make it this time. That's all right. <laughs> well, let's give it a couple minutes here. See about getting some more people in the in there we go look we got a couple people watching us now so welcome aboard ladies and gentlemen locksmith 2k here coming at you full speed ahead with world of warships gameplay and ship history and on this episode we are going to take a brief look at the Arid eritrea and the nino beaks Bixio, and I'm sure that I have butchered those names, and I am sorry if I did. Uh, these were Italian cruisers uh, that date back uh, World War One-ish. Um, yeah, World War One-ish, early World War Two. The Arantria actually was commissioned just prior to the outbreak of World War Two. I think the Nino is a little bit older than that. Uh, Despite the colorful camouflage here, um, I actually have not used these ships really. Uh, so this will kind of be a first for me because if I have taken them out, I haven't done much with them. I don't think I've, yeah, I've taken this one out a little bit. Uh, the Nino, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more, but not much. So, uh,. Let's uh, let, let's take them out and uh, knock the rust off of them, and then we'll talk about them. So, how's everybody doing out there in in uh, YouTube and Twitch land? Let's see, we got a couple of viewers over on Twitch. This may take a while. This is a tier one after all. It has been a good week. A uh, couple of minor things, you know, kind of went, you know, sideways, not really south, just kind of sideways. You know what I'm talking about, Scout. But overall, good week, good week, yeah. Looking forward to next week when we uh, step up uh, 
possibly uh, start stepping up the amount of streaming we're doing, start uh, building up a good fan base, sharing our vision with uh, with everyone. Wow, this is might end up being a going into co-op just so we can do something. Try that again. Come on. There we go. Keep climbing. Come on. I think if we can get 18, I think that'll be enough to get it to... Uh... I think at tier one, the minimum is like eight or nine per team. So, if we can get it up to 18, maybe we can. I hate to say this, ladies and gentlemen, we might have to go over to co-op. Don't necessarily want to do that. There we go. I I, I just have to know. And that's what a bunch of tier one cruisers looks like. Let's see how this goes. This is actually going to be a bit of a change because it's been a, been a day or two since I've been on. Uh, Once again, we got some really nice scenery out here. Wargaming's done a good job with. Nice little zip. Nice Zeppelin flying over here. Kind of cool. Planes off in the distance over there. Kind of neat. Some of the little details in this game really make it worth really make it worthwhile just little things like the airplanes or the zeppelin or uh just the detail in these villages
I was beginning to wonder if I was going to hit them. Yeah, it's definitely back to basics. But you got to learn to crawl before you can walk. So when you uh, first start out the game, this is about where you're at doing basically this right here. Um, gives you a chance to get a feel for it. Of course, when you get up further in ship tier and level, coming back to something like this is kind of a bit of a culture shock, I guess you could say. Not faring too good, but maybe we can get that fire out before we die. Nope. All right, so let's go back to port. Let's pick up the Nino, and then uh, we'll go out with the Nino, see if we have better results than that, and then uh, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit about what these ships are. And also I'd like to say, uh, get, do a little hoorah shout out to the uh, veterans from World War II that may be watching or may watch this in the future. Today is uh, VE Day, which stands for Victory in Europe. Uh, so today was the day that we actually uh, war uh, against Germany ended. So hoorah to all the veterans that served in World War II in the European theater. Uh, this is the day that you guys made possible. It's the day you guys earned. Thank you very much. Ooh, I see battleships and destroyers. All we got. Oh. Okay. If I didn't know better, I'd say these were all cruisers. But I think, nope, the Samson is a destroyer. when you look at these ships how old the design was when you see these masts and the way they're structured to allow them to do what they do Uh-huh. 
All right, well, the reload time on this thing is definitely junk. But the guns seem to actually do a little bit of damage. And, uh... Turn out here. Stop presenting such a nice target. Got him! With the first blood. Now, to get out of range of everything that's trying to kill me. Preferably that thing. Okay, will do. Good show. <laughs> Ask and ye shall receive. Smack. So this actually isn't a terrible little boat. I've definitely sailed on worse. See if we can wreck his day. Great, but not terrible. So, the Eritrea was actually an Italian, known as a sloop, it's Italian. It was a colonial ship. I would have to look that up to find out what that means, because I've never heard that term before. But, nevertheless, she was 20, uh, 2,200 tons empty, 30, uh, 3,000 uh, 100 tons full load. She had a length of uh, 317 feet, a beam of 43 feet, and a draft of 15. She was commissioned in 1937 and had diesel electric power. You had 7,800 horsepower diesel engines, and then you had 1,300 horsepower electric motors. Uh, she could hit a speed of about 20 knots, and had a range of about 7,000 miles. Uh, crew complement was 234. And when it gets out of battle, we'll go over its weapons. Well, there's the Nino. 
Wasn't expecting to see that out of battle that quick. What this one? We'll go open our container. Oh, what'd we get? What'd we get? Let's see. Let's go resources. Well, we can always use coal. That's a good thing. And there she is. So here is the Errantry Abac. Now her weapon systems were four 120 millimeter or 4.7 inch guns, which you can see right here. And right here. Those were her primary guns. You had two Vickers 40 millimeter pom poms. Now the pom-pom gun is actually the predecessor, kinda, to the, uh, uh, what is it called? I want to make sure I get the name right. Bofors. The uh, Bofors gun. Actually, the pom-poms were phased out by the Bofors. I'm looking, I don't see... May have to let the computer show us where they are. Want to find out? AA defense. Here we go. Okay, it's these things right here. Those are the the forty millimeter pom poms, and you had four thirteen millimeter machine guns. Set back down. All right. Now, one of the unique things about the vessel is it had an, a, a uh, workshop on board that was for servicing uh, submarines for actually uh, working on Italian submarines. Kind of a neat little fact there. Um, and prior to World War II, the ship was actually not part of the Regina Marina, which is the Italian Navy. It actually did not join the Italian Navy until June 10th, 1940. Um, during uh, 1941, early part of 41, when uh, Japan was still neutral at the time, the uh, East Africa campaign was in full swing and was actually kind of going bad for the uh, Italians. So the Eritrea... Uh, managed to slip through to the Indian Ocean and off to Kobe, Japan, uh, where she would resume her life as a commerce raider. Well, there was one little glitch in that plan, and that was Japan being uh, neutral at the time. Didn't like the idea of a commerce raider uh, running around right outside their ports. So they immediately, uh, more or less, impounded the ship for all intents and purposes in Kobe so that it couldn't leave. Uh, but once Japan uh, joined the war in December, uh, they actually used her to repair transport submarines that were headed to Japan. In uh, 43, 
Italy declared an armistice, and the uh, Erentria sailed to Colombo in Celion to surrender. After the after the war, she was turned over to the French Navy, was renamed the Francis Grenier, Grenier, where it continued to serve in the French Navy until 1965. Uh, sadly, she was actually sunk during a nuclear test in the Pacific Ocean in 1966. But now we get to take her out. We get to sail her. Which, shameless promotion, come sail with us. World of Warships is free to play. Wargaming does a phenomenal job of making an amazing game. And there's always room in my plan for new members who are wanting to learn to play the game or just have a little fun. Now, unfortunately for the history side of this tonight, they're really just, uh, I was hoping these ships would, would have a lot of rich history to them, but they really didn't. Uh, they just weren't really around long enough. Um... jammed anyway. Hey. Why is it always got to be the rudder? I kind of saw that gum and the rudders got jammed. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get picked apart this time around.
We're gonna get the Nino set back up here. Uh, da -da. Don't have enough. Writing. We're gonna get the Nino back underway here. See if we can have a little bit better battle than last time. Not a bad ship, though. Like I said, I have had worse. Ooh, yeah, this is gonna get fun. I think we got a fairly large battle this time around. <laughs> well, that's why you said it was a good week, not a great week. No, a great week would have been minus the scissors. Kind of had to cut your losses there. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Good luck, everyone. Much obliged. <laughs> We're going to take aim on this uh, Riant here. Battleship? Uh oh. Surprise! I can hit you. Not that I'm doing much better. Where?
All right, that was kind of a little bit of a little bit of a battle going there. Definitely had me on my toes there for a minute. And surprise! Hi there. Get it in just a second, Scout. A little bit. So, so far, this has definitely been a pretty even match. They're only a couple of points ahead of us. I hate to break it to him, but I don't think zigzagging is going to help him that much.
Okie dokie. Uh, Scout, you should be good to go. If you would, um, there is a area not far from uh, base there, and uh, you will find me standing in it uh, with a bunch of stuff. You could uh, wall that in for me, that would really help out. So, preferably, I'm still you know live thank you all right <clears throat> so the nino fix i ain't even gonna try was commissioned in 1914 uh was the lead ship of the class uh, full load displacement of 4,141 uh, tons was 460 feet long 43 feet wide and had a 13 foot draft it had 14 boilers making a grand total of 23,000 shaft horsepower it had three turbines and three propellers. <laughs> Do about 27 knots and had a range of about 1,400 miles. Crew complement was 13 officers and 283 enlisted personnel. Now we were looking at this ship the other night while I was getting everything lined up here and the guns on this thing are arranged rather interestingly and also another feature I'd like to point out is this area right here those of you who aren't familiar with what that is that is the bridge area of a ship you notice that one doesn't look like it's made out of steel that's because it's not that is made out of canvas. And, uh, guess what? That's where you worked at if you drove the ship. Sorry, I had to make an adjustment on some uh, software. All right, so we were noticing that the gun turrets on this thing are kind of oddly placed. Uh, very unique design. You got two forward facing guns here, which obviously have a large traverse angle. You've got two here. And two here. And one here. Uh, no, no problem, uh, Scout. Uh, other audio was coming through. Had to turn it down. But uh, very interesting layout for the guns, to say the least. Uh, and out of those, she had six 4.7 inch guns six three-inch guns two torpedo tubes and carried a complement of about 200 mines
Alrighty. You are, st you are stuck. Huh. Uh. Can't really rescue you at the moment. So, the uh, Nino, along with some other ships, the Marsala, the uh, Rato and the Brindishi uh, were used uh, to patrol the Adriat the passageway from the Adriatic to the Mediterranean. <laughs> During uh, I believe it was World War One. <coughs> Like I said, the information on these ships was kind of sketchy to get. Very hard to find. Very hard to find. Doesn't mean we're not going to go out and sink ships and have fun. So, uh... Yes, that would have been uh, First World War. I... I I confirm that. <clears throat> and uh, it also served alongside uh, British forces. During the war, uh, tracking down uh, supply convoys, as well as uh, German U-boats. Wow, here we go again. Tough crowd. Hard to get into battles tonight. Um... The uh, Nino was actually decommissioned in 1929 due to problems during her service. Uh, from what I could gather, she had a lot of mechanical issues. So instead of trying to fix it, which could be very costly, the Italian Navy decided it was uh, better to just get rid of the ship and build a new one.
So, overall, wasn't a whole lot that I could find on these two. That pretty much sums it up. A lot of their service was uh, World War One, early World War Two, except for the uh, Eritrea, which actually did see the end of the war. And they didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, <clears throat> of course, by World War II standards, both of them were... Well, the Nino didn't make it to World War II. However, if it would have, it would have been very obsolete. <laughs> Eritrea wasn't far from being obsolete. So, Scout, did you ever uh, fix your problem there? Boneheads die first. Is that another player? Okay. Yeah, sometimes these people post this stuff in... chat and I am standing inside of a house that had double doors That, ladies and gentlemen, would be alluding to you that uh, some of the changes coming up in the near future, actually not changes, but additions, channel, and one of those would be the addition of a new game, as well as the ability to share that game, not only with you, but to share that game with my wife as well. Beautiful and talented scout. Sheesh. Haters gonna hate. Off me. Ah. Get down in these low tier battles, you forget you're not running with fancy armor and stuff like that. You tend to get, uh, shot up a little faster when you get under focus fire. That's alright though. We're having fun. Sinking ships.
We get to do some upgrading. Nice. Green done there. We might have enough to go ahead and possibly research. We do. We can research our Italian tier three. For now, however, we're not taking it out tonight. Back, you know, which we finish getting ready for the battle, and we are going to get the Nino underway again. My uh, XO has come to visit me, ensure that I'm running a tight ship tonight. He seems to be satisfied with my uh, abilities so far this evening, so it's always a good thing. So, uh, it would appear that uh, Memorial Day is fast approaching. And I always like to try to do something special for Memorial Day. Uh, last year, unfortunately, I was not able to much due to a uh, hardware malfunction with my computer, i.e. my computer basically died. But with any luck, this year we will be posting up a video to go along with live stream oh now come on y'all gotta do that Naturally, I can't steer.
little close. Eek. Ha <laughs> Missed. Got a good answer for that. I do. Surprise! Deep plane, boss, deep plane. Well, I thought it was fun. Sometimes you just gotta crack jokes just to have fun. All right, where did all the enemy ships go? I swore we had at least a couple of them around. Sink all of them yet. There we go. Going somewhere? <laughs> yeah, that gives me three kills. Two more, I get a Kraken. I wonder. Hmm. No, it's not. Problem solved, sir. Don't think I'm going to get that Kraken. Eh. 
Thank you, Scout. Hey, all right, we picked up another container. Got. Let's go with signals and camouflage. Just we've done that. So back to the air entry. Let's look around the ship a little. couple of motor boats back here probably for laying mines or it's captain's gig or something to that effect that'd be the captain's gig over there Let's go back out with the Eritrea.
Thank you, Scout. Maybe when I get done here, we'll uh, see about transporting some of that stuff. And uh, reappropriating stuff while we're at it. Let's try that again. Oh, here we go. All right. I like that they add these little fishing villages and fishing town kind of things like this. It just kind of gives it a different feel. And, you know, if this was just all plain islands, it'd be like, oh, boy, we're sailing through a bunch of rocks. But then you see this little fishing town right here. Looks like it's got a little inn over here, maybe. Church in there, I saw. It almost gives it a sense of being a real place. Like this actually, you know...
Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. I had a... Kitty cat trying to hang out in my lap. Getting a little heavy. Yes, he is a fat cat. He's a good executive officer, though. He's making sure that the ship is running true. expect to see that out here South Carolina huh Problem child, handle.
How are all these little battles ending up all the way over here against the edge of the map? Alright, we took that battle. So for next week, I'm going to have to make sure I come up with a lot more content than a couple of hours. Than just a couple of ships, should I? So even though there wasn't a whole lot on them, Erentria and Nino, very short but distinguished services doing what they did best. True testament to the sailors that uh, sailed on them. And we unlocked the Taranti, Tarant, Taranto, Taranto. Uh, you know what? Let's take the tur let's. Even though we weren't going to, let's take this ship out. I want to see what it does. Give it some basic stuff here. The only way we're going to learn, as per what it will do, go use it.
off the bat. Gun traverse speed is not atrocious, but it's not great. does have torpedoes though it's interesting and just like the uh, Nino has a very interesting gun arrangement Okay, Wargaming, I gotta call you out on that one there, uh, there was not rockets that early on. Bet you didn't see that coming. I'll bet you he was not ready for that surprise. Gotta love surprise torpedoes.
Uh oh. Looks like we have caught the attention of the aircraft carriers. Being nice enough to grace us with gifts called of torpedoes. Yay! But I always wanted. Not a bad ship, not a bad ship. Look forward to using that a little bit more in the future. Now, I've been hearing this, uh, yes, Rogue, uh, rumor mill, and I think it's going to be, don't quote me, but I think it's going to be in 8.4. Which is our next update. Uh, they are going to be releasing submarines into the World of Warships arena. Uh, two years ago, they did submarines as part of, I believe, the Halloween special. However, I missed that due to uh, a little thing called a hurricane. Kind of went by the name of Hurricane Michael. But, uh, supposedly they are releasing <laughs> submarines in the next update. Not only is that going to add a whole new dimension to the game. It's also going to give us something else to work for. And. <laughs> utilize. So I'm kind of excited for that. Like I said, I've only seen a rumor. It has been in works for a while, though. And yes, uh, Rogue makes a very good executive officer. Uh, he might get promoted to having a stateroom. Only during stream, of course. Yeah, submarines, especially World War II submarines, were a very, very tough life. You, you were cramped. A lot of times you had to hot rack. Um, I was actually listening to a Naval Legends video the other night. They were discussing Cologne being a thing due to uh, the uh, lack of being able to shower while underway so the crew would just wear an excessive amount of cologne all the time
Well, something to always remember about uh, World War II, especially, or anything prior to, you know, 1980s, roughly. Uh, it was basically ships were wood and men were steel. And even as ships were being made out of steel, the late 1800s, early 1900s, same rules still applied. Everything was done by hand. We didn't have, they didn't have computers and fancy gizmos and all that to uh, do this stuff for them. They had to do it themselves. You know, they were talking about uh, a while back, I was watching uh, some videos about the uh, USS Texas. And the uh, way those, those shells found their ways to the elevators and hoists to go up to those main guns was 19-year-old sailors picking them up and carrying them. And that was true not just in the American Navy, that was all navies. All the navies of the world, you know, they, they had to learn to do things, you know, that, what we would take for granted nowadays. They had, they're, they're the ones that pioneered it. They're the ones that were out there doing it the hard way, navigating with minimal navigation tools and You know, no radar, no air conditioning. Sometimes almost, you know. And you look at some of these really old ships and the guys driving them were standing outside. And there might be six inches of snow and ice out on those decks and they were still that's where they were you know you look at the guns for example on the Nino or the Air, uh, Eritrea they're not enclosed gun turrets which means if it's below freezing, you're out there in it. If it's pouring down rain, you're out there in it. You know, the, this is this this goes back to a time when war was well, war was the same. Just the way we fought it was drastically different. But uh, now the subs, if they bring them out, I've I've heard good things. Uh, I saw some interesting things in play tests. Uh, be a very interesting thing to see how they uh, have implemented this. So uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we got about just under 10 minutes left. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about the future of next week and what we are going to present next week. For our World of Warships history. Hey. 
And uh, I think next week we might do the Frederick Der George. And maybe the Bismarck as well. I haven't used uh, done these ships yet. I haven't used them in a while. Be a chance to talk about a little bit of German ingenuity. <laughs> you like that, do you, Scout? I think Scout likes her battleships. And then also, our future holds uh, additional stream days for World of Warships. They won't necessarily be history. They'll just be a drop by and uh, say hey if you're in there. Or if you don't want to say hey, just drop by and watch what's going on. We're just going to be out sinking ships, running around. I'm not going to really be uh, doing anything spectacular. And then we're also going to be, hopefully, adding Minecraft to our game channel here. And doing a little bit of Minecraft. Just so we can... Uh, kind of give everybody a little something different. And uh, Scout's going to be kind of heading that one. I'm just going to be facilitating a stream. I'll let Scout run the show, though. What do you say, Scout? We'll talk. Okay. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Uh, probably going to see you with any luck. We're going to see you Tuesday night around seven o'clock, maybe eight, somewhere in there with just a chill stream of sinking war sh sinking ships. And uh, until then, keep a weather eye on the horizon for us. This is Locksmith2K saying fair winds following seas.